Addition easily works with a variety of substrate depending on its use. Next, please. So how nanofibers are uh, produced? So nanofibers are produced using electrospinning process with diameter much less than that produced by conventional spinning method and have effective properties like high surface area to volume ratio, high aspect ratio, control pore size, and superior mechanical and chemical performance with decreasing diameter. It is also a simple, convenient, and cost-effective technique for generating one-dimensional nanostructure. Next, please. So coming to my host material, that is yttrium aluminum garnet. So what is it? It is the binary composite of yttrium oxide and aluminum oxide. It has excellent properties like, like high tensile strength, high elastic modulus, inherent oxidation and reduction resistance at high temperature, high melting point, high temperature creep resistance, excellent optical properties with zero biofringes and optical isotropy. It has favorable thermal and optical, chemical and mechanical properties, which is to be used as a host material in solid state laser, luminescence material and scintillators. Also, it is easy to dope YAG with various rare earth ions, which make it excellent fluorescence host material. It is known as oxide with highest creep resistance, having high melting point of 1940 degrees Celsius. It is used in many harsh applications like missile dome, transparent armor, hypersonic flight windows, etc. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So now what are, uh, sorry, behind side, yttrium aluminum garnet nanofiber. Yes. So uh, according to literature review, YAC ceramic fibers not only have good flexibility, a large aspect ratio, good continuity, lightweight and high strength, but also a high melting point, stable physical and chemical property, high temperature creep resistance, and excellent optical property, which allows them to be used as structural reinforcement. YAG nanofibers have been studied by many researchers and drawn to various conclusions, but there are few reports on preparation of YAG nanofiber. So the special mechanical and optical property of YAG material can not only be enhanced by preparing YAG nanofiber using electrospinning technique, but also the fiber morphology at nanoscale can be utilized for designing smart cloths due to their good flexibility with high mechanical strength and light emitting characteristic. Next slide, please. Now dysprosium dope yttrium aluminum garnet. So uh, trivalent rare earth ions have 4F, 4F inertial transition, which shows important features such as high luminescence sealed, narrow emission line, and long decay time constant. Dysprosium is also a rare earth element having trivalency, and the difference between radius of yttrium ion and dysprosium ion is only 0.69%, which is make it possible to replace Y3 plus ion with DY3 plus ion in YAG. So up till now, lots of DY3 plus dope phosphors such as borates, phosphates, molybdates, etc. have been researched, but among all DY YAG has ideal optical as well as mechanical property. So it is decided for the, to fabricate this DY YAG nanofiber using electrospinning process to study its optical property so that it is used in many applications. Next slide, please. So this is the synthesis process of uh, dy yag nanofibers. So in this, I have used yttrium nitrate, hexahydrate, and aluminum nitrate, nonohydrate in the ratio of 3 to 5. I have added 10 weight percent of polymer PVB for as spinning additive. And for dysprosium precursor, I have used dysprosium nitrate hydrate. This all the contents are dissolved in ethanol, which is used as solvent. And these are stirred overnight. Then we obtain a viscous solution, which is loaded in the syringe for electrospinning. The obtained nanofiber sheet is dried for 80 degrees Celsius overnight. And then the dried nanofibers are calcined at 900 degrees Celsius for two hours. So the as obtained nanofiber is shown in this figure. Next slide, please. These are the results of my obtained nanofiber. This is thermogravimetric analysis and thermal differential analysis of YAG PVB nanofiber. This, from this graph, we can see that TG analysis shows minor weight loss step occurs from 200 degrees Celsius due to loss of trap solvent and moisture in YAG PVB composite nanofiber. 
while the major weight loss step occur from 200 degree celsius to 600 degree celsius due to evaporation of organic polymer while the plateau region from 700 degree celsius to 900 degree celsius shows the formation of crystalline yak phase and the dta curve shows that the reaction is exothermic in nature around 300 degree celsius to 750 degree celsius next slide please this is the xrd pattern of my obtain nanofiber from the first a diagram we can see that the xrd pattern of yag nanofiber calcine at 900 degree celsius perfectly match with the jcpds card of yag that is 01082575 and uh, no amorphous phase was observed with and also there was good matching between these two sets and due to good reactivity of the materials no intermediate phases such as yam or ya have coexist figure 2 figure b shows the dy ya xrd pattern which also it is completely match with the standard jcpt side of ya and there are no additional impurity peaks in the pattern which compounds its cubic system with space group i a minus 3 d having lattice parameter 12.0241 angstrom next slide please this is the same images of obtain nanofiber from the same images we can see that all the same images are uniform ultra long continuous smooth with random orientation fabricated by electro spinning also its diameter is also uh, in nanometer range from the table we can see that before calcination the diameter ranges from 120 degree celsius to 250 degree celsius while after calcination the diameter ranges from 70 degree celsius to 150 degree celsius which is purely in nanometer range so we can say from the same images that the obtain nanofiber are purely in nanometer range which makes its property more effective next slide please can you make it fast ma yes ma'am this is the photoluminescence property of the obtain nanofiber from which we can see that when the yag nanofiber are excited with a wavelength of 460 nanometer emission peak occur around 499 nanometer in visible region emitting yellowish green region as seen from the chromaticity diagram behind while when the dy dop yag nanofiber are excited at 350 nanometer we get three emission peaks first at 483 nanometer corresponding to transition 4f 9 by 2 to 6h 15 by 2 in blue region second at 584 nanometer corresponding to transition 4f 9 by 2 to 6h 13 by 2 in yellow region and third at 683 nanometer corresponding to transition 4f 9 by 2 to 6h 11 by 2 in red region the magnetic dipole transition that is in blue region hardly varies with crystal field strain around dy 3 plus ion while the hypersensitive transition in yellow region is force electric transition which varies strongly by the chemical environment surrounding dy 3 plus ion from the graph we can see that the intensity of 1% dy dop yag is less than 2% dy dop yag but when uh, we increase the percentage of doping of dy in yag the intensity of emission decreases from this we can conclude that the uh, dy dop yag get, uh, shows the concentration quenching at 2% which is emitting blue because blue intensity of peak emitting in blue region is much high so we can consider it as effective Uh, luminescent material emitting in blue region which is also confirmed from the table values of ci diagram which shows the x and y coordinate of our uh, color emitting material with their luminescence efficiency of radiation values from this we can see that 2% dy dop yag value have maximum lr value in comparison to rest of the doping values thus 2% dy dop yag can be considered as efficient material for do, uh, for smart clothing emitting in blue region next slide please next uh, this is my conclusion from uh, so we have successfully prepared yag nanofiber and exorcent divide of yag nanofiber and their average diameter ranges from 70 to 150 degree celsius with smooth and continuous fiber structure also from tga dt analysis we can obtain that the yak phase is obtained at 900 degree celsius which is also confirmed by xrd result 
and when this young nanofiber are excited at 460 nanometer we get emission peak around 499 nanometer emitting in yellowish green region when divide of young nanofiber are excited at 350 we get three emission peak but the intensity of peak emitting in blue region is much higher which is obtained at 483 nanometer due to transition for f9 by 2 to 6h15 by 2 thus the intensity of uh, peak emitting in blue region is greater than in yellow and red region thus we can use uh, we can obtain color tunability from yellowish green region of yag that is of host material to blue region of dy yag and from the result obtained from photoluminescence spectra we are, we can say that the promising blue color emitting nanofiber may be 2% dy do yag nanofiber for smart clothing application thank you ma'am next slide Thank you, ma. Thanks. Are there any queries, sir? There. Yes, sir. Any queries, sir? There. Okay, I am thankful to Gaspreet Kaur. Next, I will call Mohammad Rahan Ansari from University of Delhi. Yes, ma'am. I am audible. Yes, yes, audible. Now we yes, can start it, boy. Uh, like he is from Department of Electronic Science, University of Delhi. Uh, his topic is effect of annealing temperature on microstructural, optical, and magnetic properties of spinel compound. Yes, you can start, pa. Muhammad. Is, yes, ma'am. Yeah, start sharing. Okay. Yes, you can start it, ma. Mohammad. Actually, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Actually, so it's not uh, responding my laptop. Just give me one minute, ma'am. Yeah. What happened, ma? I think there is some issue. Yes, ma'am. You can start next person. I will. Next person, that, I'll I call you. afterwards. I'll come back to you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Whether Angela Maria is available? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma. You can start your presentation. Angela, she is from uh, Department of Chemistry, Central University of Tamil Nadu, Tiruvaru. She is going to talk about impact of N-capped units on the resistive switching memory behavior of DAD R. And the architect Esther flanked with quinolins. Yes, you can start now. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, is the is presentation visible? It's visible now. You can continue. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to present my work entitled. 
impact of end-capped units on the resistor switching behavior of DAD architectured ester frank quinolins. The content of my presentation include a short introduction to the memory world as well as the uh, uh, molecules prevailing in it and the objective of my work, the result and discussion as well as finally the conclusion. We live in an increasingly electronic world in which the storage of information is very pivotal. And looking into the memory devices, these are storage devices uh, which, which stores information from human being to tiny chips. And these memories or the memory main memory is usually associated with an integrated circuit with silicon transistors. These are now being fastly replaced by organic molecules. And the organic memory started in the year 1960s, and its first reports were, were, were in the uh, mo acene molecules. But coming into the organic memory, these organic memories are mainly divided into two types, that is the volatile and the non-volatile memory. Volatile memory, as its name suggests, uh, requires a constant replenishment of uh, data, uh, replenishment for uh, uh, storing its data and uh, in the non-volatile memory it is of two types that is the worm and the flash memories which can handle data for a longer period of time it is a uh, worm which is the right ones and read many times memory it is a electrically irreversible memory and uh, whereas flash it is a electrically reversible memory these organic memories came into the picture through the uh, donor acceptor systems and these have been highly appreciated for its uh, vast applications like intramolecular charge transfer and uh, the molecules with uh, small alterations in the molecules we can uh, alter the uh, electronic energy levels and thus form an optimized band gap so thus uh, a balanced pnn channel behavior can be uh, contributed to the uh, uh, in the molecules and this is su highly suitable for the electronic applications Looking into the molecule of my interest, which is quinolins, quinolins are highly known for its high thermal stability and photoluminescence. And because of its uh, planar structure and, and the fused ring structure and the uh, central nitrogen atom, it usually acts as an accepting molecule, which when attached to a donor molecule, molecule can enhance its accepting properties. And these are also known for its self-assembling properties and pi pi stacking properties as well these have been highly investigated not highly investigated in the field of electronics but still shows application in oics oifat oil edsc etc and but there have been no reports in the organic memory areas looking into the objective of my work which includes the synthesis of new dad estoflanquinolins for the uh, development of highly efficient small molecules for memory devices and the alteration of band gap of the molecules with different substitutions and uh, the characterization of these molecules by spectral techniques, photophysical, electrochemical, and morphological studies, and finally, the memory uh, device fabrication and performance analysis. Looking into the synthesis scheme of my uh, molecules, initially, the uh, quinolin derivatives were derived from the fibromo isatin, which, on, uh, if, which when underwent a uh, Fitzinger reaction with uh, corresponding um, acetophenone to the yield the compound one, which is a uh, dibromo derivative of the quinolin, which on uh, further esterification gave the compound two. And different uh, donor moieties, that is the uh, triaryl amine, amine, amine was used as the donor molecule, and its different acetylenes were prepared. And triaryl went underwent uh, monobromination and dibromination, and uh, further um, uh, sonic ester coupling reaction and deprotection to yield the compound four. And the compound 5 on Suzuki coupling reaction with tertiary butyl phenyl boronic acid uh, gave the compound 6, which on iodination and further sonic ester coupling and deprotection gave the co uh, corresponding acetylene 8. And this uh, another derivative of TPA was uh, synthesized from uh, TPA itself with the Wilsmeyer Heck formulation reaction, uh, which gave the compound 9, which on iodination and further sonic ester deprotection. Sonic ester coupling and deprotection gave the acetylene 11. This uh, aldehyde was then converted into its corresponding uh, cyanide and then uh, underwent the sonic ester coupling and deprotection to give the compound 13. These molecules, these acetylenes, uh, 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 coupled with the uh, dibromo derivative of the quinolins uh, under sonic ester conditions with DMF and DPAS solvent and uh, base. With, uh, and, for five to six hours uh, gave the target compounds. So these are the targeted molecules in which uh, the triaralamine acts as the donor molecule and the 
quinolins access the acceptor molecules and we have connected these molecules with the ethylene group the, uh, ethyl, uh, acetylene groups for increasing the conjugation also the uh, there have been uh, these thiaramine have been encapped with electron donating and withdrawing substituents for understanding the structure property relationships this is a cor corresponding proton nmr spectra of the molecule the uh, uh, ethyl ester uh, methyl ester proton ap appears at 4.09 ppm as well as this is the pro carbon nmr spectra in which the uh, acetylene proton carbon appears at 88.92 and 91.99 ppm this is a mass spectrum of the uh, representative molecule uh, 14c the calculated m plus value is uh, corresponds with the uh, measured value also looking into the photophysical properties of the molecule all the molecule exhibited a uh, good UV spectra with the uh, lambda max in the range of uh, 320 to 4, 340 to 24, uh, 420 nanometer, with the molecule 14B having the highest intensity in absorption, whereas uh, all the molecules exhibited a broad emission spectra as well. The photophysical parameters of the molecules were tabulated here, and the uh, and the stock shift of the molecules are interesting. With the molecule 14B having a stock shift of 213.6 nanometer, which could be highly beneficial for the intramolecular charge transfer. And looking into the electrochemical properties of the molecule, all the molecules exhibited a uh, irreversible oxidation and reduction peaks uh, and these uh, oxidation peaks were, were used for the uh, calculation of formal lumo values and the band gap of the molecules and the band gap of the molecules ranges from 2.63 to 2.98 uh, electron volt uh, with the molecule 14b having the uh, lowest uh, lowest band gap these experimental values have been highly supported with the uh, computational values as well Looking into the memory characteristics, the memory uh, devices were fabricated by using the glass, uh, ITO coated glass as the substrate above which the active layer of the compounds were uh, coated and on which the silver electrodes were placed. Initially, when we apply a voltage of 0 to minus 3, the device is in the off state and uh, after a threshold voltage of minus 1.2 volt, the current abruptly changes from 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 2. Uh, so, uh, so the device switches on and this device is in the on state even in the further sweeps from 0 to minus 3 and in 0 to plus 3 as well. So this is the uh, representative warm memory behavior wherein we can only write once and read many times but it is not erasable. I will have only two more minutes ma. Make it uh, fast. Okay. okay. Uh, so all the... All the molecules uh, exhibited the worm memory behavior itself with the molecule 14A and 14B having the highest on of ratio of 10 raised to 4 with the threshold voltages of minus 1.25 and minus 1.10 and stability is where measured with uh, endurance and retention tests. Uh, looking into the uh, proposed mechanism, uh, it was found that the uh, whole injection from I2 to uh, home of the molecules is easier than the electron injection from silver to uh, uh, the loom of the molecules. Thus, the holes were found to be the major charge carriers in the system. And uh, looking into the ESP diagrams of the molecules, we found that there is a continuous conduction pathways with, with uh, the, the red parts that can act as uh, traps in the molecule, traps in the molecules that is, uh, that is uh, derived from the electron accepting groups. That is the quinolin group, as well as the uh, 14C and 14D having the end cap units of uh, CHO and uh, CN can in, uh, can increase the voids, uh, the red units. So th thus, this increases the threshold voltage. Also, the homolumo levels of the molecule 14A and 14B shows uh, good charge transfer with mole uh, homo electron density situated in the triaralamine and the lumo density situated in the quinolin units, which has been improved by the lumo plus one and lumo plus two. This is the reason for the higher uh, on off ratio of the molecules 14A and 14B. So, on conclusion, we uh, derived a uh, new synthesized new uh, DAD systems have been designed synthesized by using ester flank quinolins as the core moiety. And these new compounds are characterized by spectral techniques. The photophysical electrochemical studies were performed. The, all the molecules showed good uh, worm memory performance with an on-off ratio of 10 raised to 4 and the threshold voltage of minus 1.1 volt. These electron uh, donating end caps gave the highest resistor switching with low threshold voltages and the me mechanism of the 
uh, memory devices includes uh, includes both the charge transfer and charge trapping. Thank you. Very good presentation, Angela. Whether Thank anybody you. has queries? Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Angela. It's really a good presentation. Thank you. Then I would call Lipsa Mondal. Lipsa Mondal? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, ma audible? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. You can start your presentation. She will be talking about, uh, about recent advancement in nano opto electromechanical system and application. She is from Gargi Memorial Institute of Technology, Kolkata. Yes, you can start, ma'am. Yes, it's visible. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. I am Lipsha Mondal. Currently, I am pursuing BTEC in Electronics and Communication from Gargi Memorial Institute of Technology. Uh, so, I would like to thank my co authors, Mr. Obhijit Mojumdar, and our faculties, Mr. Hiranmoy Shamanto sir and Mrs. Uh, Shampadash, madam. So, uh, today my topic is uh, nano up to electromechanical system. Um, actually, I am highlighting the recent advancement in nano up to electromechanical system and its application so this is the flow of the presentation uh, and uh, my next slide so uh, here I'm going to tell uh, the recent advancement of nano opto electromechanical system so controlling mild propagation in one of the maximum critical demanding situation is optics and photonics and has direct effect on optical communication such as modulation optical switching tool and community uh, reconfigurability in addition to sensing and imaging like uh, beam uh, staring from the overall overall legal uh, guideline of uh, electromagnetism it's far clean that such manipulate may be executed both via way of means of a version of the refractive index in a given medium or via way of means of a uh, displacement of the bodily obstacles among media and various indices so here is my second slide so here this is the uh, image of the nano opto electromechanical system so here you can see the electronics uh, mechanics and optics part so uh, the nano opto electromechanical system combine three physical system uh, those are electronics, mechanics, and optics. Mechanical deformation mediate direct and inverse effect between this system, in particular, NOEMS, uh, means uh, nano opto electromechanical system, allow enhancing uh, electro optical effects through mechanical degrees of freedom. And uh, if we see the artistic view of nano opto electromechanical system, electro electrostatic force between two electrodes and optical force in coupled sub-wavelength wave guidance and coupled charges, mechanical displacement and the optical fields. And here is my uh, next slide. So here, now is the application domain uh, in this technology uh, the technology can make contributes to the um, advent of uh, latest uh, merchandise and new organization in a totally vast variety of packages and protecting numerous uh, societal challenges and here is uh, some examples consist of the sector of biophotonics and medicine such as colonoscopy gastroscopy um, and uh, uh, the uh, next is micro displays uh, like sensors, uh, barcode readers, SLMAs, uh, micro projectors, micro cameras, HMDS, and uh, next is optical microscopy like mi miniature confocal microscope, micro um, in interferometers, uh, business endoscopy, and the optical uh, micro sensor like uh, lively guide system on lithium, niborate, etc., and lots of more and here is the outlook of my topic the study powerful electro optic coupling workable through the um, uh, nanoscale 
co-localization of uh, changes, mechanical movement and optical fields uh, makes nano opto electromechanical system particular uh, contenders for a huge variety of programs in communication, sensoring, and quantum records processing. And um, the uh, uh, progress in uh, theoretical understanding tool layout and nano fabrication techniques permits the uh, demonstration of growing particle and green structure starting from uh, reconfigurable gadgets and circuits to speedy optical switches optical sensor and uh, sign transducer and on the other hand on the course uh, in the direction of turning such standard into real world mass uh, mass producible gadgets tons will hinge at the success improve of perfect uh, sustains of process well uh, sweet as cmos and foundry stage fabrication packing too uh, will should be addressed for the reason that mechanical gadgets require isolation from the surroundings together with vacuum in a few cases yet uh, with some uh, of imp important business gamers with uh, inside the uh, discipline of Micro, microelectronics and MEMS becoming a member of the line of uh, research, the possibilities are actually higher than ever. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thanks, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Anybody has queries? Thanks, ma'am. Uh, next, we'll go to Trishita Mishra. Trishita Mishra. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes, yes, yes. You can start. She is also okay, thank you. in Kargi Memorial Institute of Technology. She will be talking about a comprehensive review of evolution of a nano generator. Yes, ma'am, you can continue. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Is visible? No, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, it's visible. Okay, ma'am. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Trishita Misra. Uh, I am pursuing my B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from Gargi Memorial Institute of Technology, Kolkata, India. Uh, our paper name is a Confession Review of Evolution of a Nano Generator. This paper is created along with my batchmate Shomi Roja from Mechanical Engineering and our assistant professor, Mr. Hiranmay Shamantu sir and uh, Arnav Ganguly sir. So here is the layout of my presentation. First, we do introduction. A nano generator is a type of technology that converts mechanical or thermal energy as produced by a small scale physical change into electricity. This paper represents the ACS nano generator with cathode and anode configuration. It is a type of technology which can convert mechanical energy to the thermal energy to produce the electricity. So basically, nano generators are in three types: piezoelectric nano generator, turboelectric nano generator, and pyroelectric. So, what is nano generator? Nano generator. So, a short uh, technology known as nano generator transforms mechanical uh, or thermal energy generated by minute physical change into electrical energy. Piezoelectric, turboelectric, and pyroelectric nano generators are the three most common types. The mechanical energy can be converted into electricity via turboelectric and piezoelectric nano generators. However, thermal energy can be obtained from a time dependent temperature variation using pyroelectric nano generator. Next, uh, there is some literature review uh, which we work current. Uh, so, scientists Zhao and Zhu have presented application of the turboelectric nanogenerator in smart home and clothing. The paper reflects the development and improvement of a clean energy related to world peace and economic development through nano energy harvesting. Uh, scientists team have presented the application of the mesophores WO3 NFS functionalized with well displaced nanoscale palladium. Uh, rhodium and platinum catalytic nanoparticles exhibit excellent sensing performance. The paper reflects the development and improvement of the demonstrated to show great promise uh, for the reliable diagnosis uh, of disease. Who uh, scientists who have invested the application of the type of highly 
stretchable turboelectric nanogenerator made for conventional this paper introduced traditional kirigami into the development of the stretchable turboelectric nanogenerator and also used for powering an lcd screen and lighting led array there is some another literature review next the applications numerous beneficial applications of piezoelectricity included uh, like sound generation and detection printing with a piezoelectric inject producing high voltages creation of electronic frequencies to operate an ultrasonic nozzle microbalance and incredibly precise optical assembly focusing it serves as the foundation uh, for several automatic re resolution scientific instrumental technique known as scanning probe micros microscopics uh, including stm afm mta and snom additional it is employed in a particle application like quartz watches uh, time reference and as the ignition source of the push start propane barbecues and cigarette lighters an example of an ac voltage multiplier is a piezoelectric transformer the piezoelectric uh, transformer uses acoustic coupling instead of magnetic coupling which is the method used to regular transformer to connect its input then the methodology uh, how does the piezoelectric generator work a significant portion of electric engineering fo focuses on conditioning electricity while another significant portion focuses on finding new ways to generate it from nearby sources of energy a revolutionary type of sensor called piezoelectric generator immediately converts mechanical energy into electrical energy without requirement uh, for the rotational motion associated with generators since a piezoelectric generator doesn't require any moving components it may build to be very small dependable and durable it also make a signal conditioning simpler there are many distinct kinds of piezoelectric elements as illustrated below uh, and uh, and each one has a unique shape and set of properties in this post let's go the great detail of operation uh, of the piezoelectric gener generator and its characteristic next effect of piezoelectric nano generator the real mechanism is the creation of the electric dipoles which are two opposite charges uh, that are close together and have the properties of a bar magnet in a crystal when a force applied to a crystal minute adjustment in the lactic structure lead to the development of electric dipole which generates a voltage source uh, across the electric crystal phase a modest quantity of charge that can be used to power an external circuit is made available by this voltage this results also apply next the conclusion nano generator harvesting uh, the energy at a very low level heat from an uh, any biological heat source like human body can used through nano generator uh, nano generators have a wide variety of application the future of the nano generator will provide a more precise and optimized result and monitorize Th that's all thank you thank you ma thanks a lot anybody has queries Okay, good presentation. Next, I will call Mohammed Rahan Ansari. Mohammed Rahan Ansari. Mohammed, are you over there? Yes, ma'am. I am here. Yes, ma'am. I am here. Ah, uh, then you can start your presentation. Okay, ma'am. He is from Electronic Science. He is going to talk about spinel materials. Yes, ma'am. Continue, ma'am. My screen is visible now? Yeah, wait. I guess it's visible now. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so my topic is effect of annealing temperature on the microstructural optical and magnetic properties of the spinal zinc ferrite nanoparticle. Uh, I am working under the supervision of Dr. Koteshwar of PETA in the Department of Electronics Science, Ministry of Delhi. So content of this uh, introduction, material method, result and discussion, conclusion the future work. So the, I started with the introduction. The zinc ferrite is a brown crystalline powder with a cubic structure. Ferrite is the first choice because uh, it has a many application. The microwave application, as uh, as of nowadays, 
the interference is there so we need some microwaves to be absorbed and should not be there due to the inter interference and it has also high resistance in magnetic properties and ease of preparation uh, the basic formula if we talk about basic formula it is a a f e 2 of 1 uh, and uh, a is placed on the tetrahedral the sites and f e is placed on the octahedral sites and zinc carbide is also a lower band semiconductor and it, it is also physical and chemically stable material if we talk about the tetrahedral position so it is the tetrahedral position where the fixed item oxygen items Uh, under the uh, above the uh, tetra octahedral position and the tetrahedral four oxygen items are there and the uh, application of this is ferrite material the magnetic recording photocatalyst microwave uh, as we talk about microwave absorber gas sensing also harmful gas sensing antibacterial is also uh, application for antibacterial packaging application and also in permanent magnet so if we talk about the uh, uh, it is uh, sensor by lot of uh, uh, methods uh, so i uh, i used uh, co precipitation method here because it is very simple and cost effective method so i take uh, zinc ferrite uh, uh, zinc nitrate uh, hexahydrate and ferrous nitrate nanohydrate in the one ratio to in a di water after that uh, uh, we uh, take it the at 80 degree centigrade on a mag magnetic stirrer of with a heating plate and uh, uh, we are we are adding nh as a pre uh, precipitating agent with two molar ratio by burette drop by drop by drop till the ph of the solution become 12 after that uh, take it for 10 minutes uh, without disturbing it uh, and after that it will filter out uh, by the watson paper number 1 and uh, this uh, extract will be annealed at different temperatures in the muffle furnace so as the structural properties the, we can see that the as synthesized material has a lot of peaks are there with the zinc hydroxide peaks and uh, feo3 peaks and uh, other peaks a uh, lot of peaks are there uh, and after the temperature elevation uh, annealed at different different temperatures these peaks are uh, dismissed due to the due to the temperature effect and the uh, 800 degree centigrade sample having the uh, uh, zinc ferrite sample with uh, jcpds card matching with the jcpds card number uh, 00022210012 and no other peaks observed at uh, 800 degree celsius sample uh, so the successful formation of ferrite at 800 degree centigrade the case if we talk about the crystallized side is increasing uh, with uh, 11 uh, 14 and 18 with the temperature uh, we we are taking the uh, uh, peak 311 uh, to calculate the crystallized size by shear equation uh, if we talk about the other crystallographic parameters uh, like uh, lattice parameter volume and density uh, lattice parameter is also increasing the volume is also increasing but the density is decreasing because the uh, volume and density are uh, inversely proportional Uh, morphological analysis uh, with uh, taken the same images of all the samples as we can see the uh, figure a b c d with uh, as synthesized 400 degree centigrade 600 centigrade and 800 centigrade centigrade the crystallized size is increasing and the agglomeration is also de decreases because of the heating effect and uh, uh, here the agglomeration is there because of the magnetic nature of the particles this is ferrite particles fe so because of the magnetic nature of this particle the agglomeration is there but after the temperature elevation uh, the crystallized size increases and the magnetic magnetization is uh, decreases uh, the edx spectrum also confirms the uh, purity of the material uh, having the peaks of z and fe and o items and no other peaks are identified in the edx spectrum it confirms the successful successful formation of the zinc ferrite material if we talk about the fti analysis Uh, which uh, gives the chemical bonding in the uh, uh, our sample so we see, we can see that the synthesized sample 4 degree 400 degree centigrade 600 degree centigrade at 800 uh, in three of the samples you can't see the two peaks which are attributed to the uh, octahedral and uh, tetrahedral as a site but in the 800 degree centigrade sample you can see that the two peaks are there which are uh, which are attributed to the zno and fio bond which uh, confirm the Uh, at at 100 degree centigrade we are uh, uh, producing the zinc ferrite uh, with a high purity uh, sample this is a very uh, good agreement with the x ray analysis and uh, we already talked with the same analysis uh, the magnetic properties is also uh, uh, confirmed by the vsm analysis at room temperature the mh curve uh, uh, you can see in the uh, 400 600 and 3 samples are there the mh curve Uh, the uh, reminiscence uh, magnetization coercivity value is almost zero you can see in the middle of the there is almost zero it will show the super paramagnetic nature of the zinc ferrite nanoparticles and as the temperature increases uh, the uh, saturation magnetization decreases as we can see also uh, see in the same images that the uh, uh, 
uh, elongation decreases due to the magnetization decreases decreasing that's why the elongation decreases we can confirm from the semiosis and uh, magnetic properties the crystallized size decreases in the in the table you can see that the uh, saturation magnetization is also decreases with ele elevation of temperature so we conclude the, our result uh, the spinal zinc ferrite has been successfully synthesized by co-precipitation method and the influence of temperature on the spectral optical and morphological magnetic properties has been studied uh, the optimized temperature to get the good crystalline quality of the spinal zinc ferrite is found to be 800 degrees centigrade confirmed by the xrd pattern which is matching with the jcpds card number 00021012 the morphological analysis was done using stem images and the presence of tetrahedral and octahedral lattice sites was confirmed by the fir analysis Uh, the vsm study show the super paramagnetic nature of the uh, zinc ferrite so in the future work we can uh, estimate the xps pl absorption and the other studies also and the device fabrication for sensing and microwave absorber application as i told you that microwave absorber and it is also uh, can use as a for catalyst in a water treatment these are some references and acknowledgement uh, to the organizer of icn for the valuable opportunity and the university grant commission for the financial support ministry of uh, university science information center delhi university for characterization facilities thank you हेलो एम आर डबल मैम एस एस हेलो यस सर इफ देर इज नो मोर क्वेश्चन वी कैन कंक्लूड सो थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग श्रीमदी श्रीमदी के सो वी नाउ वी कैन स्टार्ट अनदर सेक्शन Uh, I am inviting uh, for the sharing um, Bharati Kumari, Department of Chemical Engineering, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, then Bharati. Bharati Kumari, are you there? Uh, so we move on to next session gold nano slime uh, i invite smriti singh department of biotechnology motilal nehru national institute of technology alhabad smriti hello uh, hello prayer praise present okay yes ma'am Uh, so good evening to uh, good evening to organizer of icn uh, 2022 uh, i am smriti singh uh, research scholar at department of biotechnology motilal nehru national institute of technology allahabad uh, i pursue my phd under the supervision of dr seema nara so today i am here to present uh, a small piece of work on the nanozyme activity of gold 
what happened? Hello? Hello? Uh, so, uh, uh, the topic of my presentation is gold nanoside. Uh, we are exploring a uh, uh, special uh, category of uh, enzyme like activity in gold nanoside that is a uh, uh, acetylcholine esterase mimetic activity. So, these are the content of my presentation. Uh, it includes the introduction, work plan, result, and discussions, conclusion, acknowledgement, and references. So with the introduction, uh, nano, what are nanozymes? So nanozymes are the artificial enzymes which have intrinsic enzymatic-like activity. Uh, these intrinsic enzyme-like activities are reported in various metals, metal oxide, magnetic composite, and biometallic nanomaterials. And these, uh, these properties of these nanomaterials are using in various sensing applications. So why we are going or we are using nanozymes? So uh, there are some limitations of natural natural enzymes, like they are uh, they uh, they are very fragile in some harsh condition, harsh environmental conditions. Uh, their stability, uh, their uh, high cost of synthesis, isolation and purifications. So to overcome these uh, these problems of uh, nanozyme, we are uh, uh, natural enzymes. We are trying to uh, explore the nanozyme activity in some uh, in some metal uh, nanoparticles. Uh, these nanoparticles are highly they possess high catalytic activity. Uh, their production cost is low. They are highly stable in uh, harsh environmental conditions. Their production, their uh, commercial or mass production are more more easier in comparison to natural enzymes. They can easily tunable and uh, they can be easily modified also. So we are exploring gold uh, nanostructures because they are very well known for their excellent biocompatible properties, electrical and optical properties. Uh, there are various kind of uh, gold nanostructures uh, in their shapes, like they are spherical nanoparticles, nanostars, nano cages, gold composites. Uh, have been possesses various uh, enzyme-like properties like peroxidase, catalase, oxidase, uh, superoxide dismutase, or ribonucle uh, ribonucleotide-like activities. Uh, so, uh, we are exploring the acetylcholine esterase like activity in gold nanostructures. Uh, we, uh, this is the, the equation one, represent the simple conversion of acetylcholine. Uh, so, in the presence of acetylcholine esterase, acetylcholine converted into choline and acetic acid. Uh, these, this uh, recently or uh, till now, this acetylcholine esterase uh, enzyme is using in various biosensing application for pesticide detection and other therapeutic purposes. So we are trying to replace this acetylcholine esterase because as this is a natural enzyme, so it is also uh, suffer with the problem of the natural enzymes. So exploring a nanomaterial that can mimic the activity of acetylcholine esterase. Uh, may can uh, contribute significantly toward the acetylcholine esterase based diagnostic therapeutic applications. Uh, in recently, uh, our research group report uh, reported the intrinsic uh, peroxidase like property of gold nano rods, which uh, which is uh, which is quenched by the uh, pesticide. Uh, we are uh, we were using the malathion as a pesticide. And with uh, with these promising and inspiring results, we hypo uh, hypo we investigate we try to investigate and hypothesize that uh, may this GNRs also possess the acetylcholine like esterase activity. So this is the work plan uh, work plan for this work. Uh, the gold uh, we are exploring the gold nanorod uh, for the acetylcholine esterase mimetic like activity. So first we synthesize the gold nanorods uh, by the uh, proposed method of uh, Nara acetol. Uh, these uh, gold nanos, uh, these gold nano uh, rods were uh, synthesized by two-step uh, seed mediated process, and after the synthesis of these gold nano rods, these gold nano rod, uh, rods were characterized by the uh, electron microscopy and simple UV visible spectroscopic method. Uh, these gold nano rods were further explored for the ACHE like mimetic activity in uh, by using the simple uv visible spectroscopic analysis and fluorescence spectroscopic analysis uh, later on the as uh, i as as show, as early i shown earlier the reaction uh, when the acetylcholine is converted uh, or catalyzed by enzyme uh, the uh, it it will convert it into the choline and acetic acid. So the further confirmation of acetylcholine esterase-like activity of GNRs 
the confirmation of this uh, enzyme like activity was confirmed by the uh, ferric chloride so these are the result uh, and discussions uh, uh, for the characterization of gold nanorods uh, the gold nanorods were characterized with the help of uv visible spectra so figure a represent the uh, characteristic peak of gnrs at a particular lspr at 671 nanometer and tspr at 530 nanometer the image b showed the tam micrograph of the gold nanorods uh, the the gold nanorods were having the size of uh, the 20 nanometers later on uh, these gold uh, nanorods were uh, for estimating the acetylcholine esterase like activity the calorimetric estimation was done with the help of elmens assay so elmens assay is uh, uh, is on the basis of the conversion of the DTNB as a substrate, DT, here DTNB is diethiobisnitro benzoic acid. In the presence of thiol compound, this DTNB converted into converted into a uh, two nitro five thiobenzoic dienes. So first, we have to optimize uh, we optimize the concentration of DTNB uh, by this Elmens assay, and the figure uh, the figure two showed. Uh, the uh, the we are we perform the various uh, we perform the optimization of DTNB concentration with the with 0.8 millimolar and 1.6 millimolar. So figure uh, then figure two showed that the concentration uh, 0.8 millimolar concentration of DTNB was found the optimized, and figure three uh, showed the optimization of GNR concentration and acetyl thiopolene concentration for the for this elements assay. So, figure three represent uh, the uh, 2.507 concentration of GNRs, nanomolar concentrations of GNRs, uh, was the optimum concentration of GNR for this assay with the 75 millimolar of acetylthylcholine assay. Later on, the enzyme kinetics uh, enzyme kinetics was determined with the help of uh, with the help of this calorimetric assay. So, for the calorimetric assay, uh, we uh, we use some negative positive controls for the positive control uh, acetylcholine esterase uh, uh, enzyme is used as a positive control uh, in negative control uh, only acetylthiocholine is for gnrs there is only gnr and all these uh, this uh, figure 4 shows that the reaction mix is the acetylthiocholine with gnrs and the reaction buffer so it indicates that the peak uh, the peak of the reaction mix uh, in comparison to po uh, positive control indicate that the gnr have the uh, gnr had convert the acetyl thiocholine into uh, choline so uh, the peaks uh, the corresponding peak with the positive control later on the with the help of uh, uh, linear group plot uh, the enzyme uh, acetylcholine esterase mimetic activity of gnr show the Vmax velocity uh, enzyme kinetic Vmax is 19.273 micromolar per minute. Later on, uh, this conversion is also confirmed with the ferric chloride in the presence of acetic acid, which is a byproduct of uh, this conventional acetylcholine uh, reaction. The acetic acid... Um, okay. acetic acid yes, ma'am? Could you please uh, conclude the presentation within a minute? Yeah, ma'am, yeah. So uh, with the uh, with the ferric chloride in the presence of acetic acid, the ferric chloride converted into uh, into the as uh, ferric acetate, uh, which is in cherry brown color and in the precipitate. So as we can say, uh, sh uh, show in the table, uh, 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 in the presence of GNRs, uh, there is a precipitate form. So it also uh, conclude that uh, our uh, GNRs have the acetylcholine esterase like mimetic activity. Later on, this assay was also uh, confirmed with a fluorometric assay. So for this fluorometric assay, uh, GNP is used as a control because uh, GNP has a uh, GNP has a uh, emission spectra at 600 nanometer. So in the presence of uh, some uh, compounds like acetic acid, clony, uh, choline, and all these components, there is a shift in the GNP's flor uh, flor uh, fluorescence. So, uh, in the presence, uh, as indicated in the figure five, the complete uh, in the presence of GNRs, there is a uh, increase in the uh, fluorescence of the GNPs, which also uh, confirmed that the style choline esterase like mimetic activity of GNRs. Uh, so, with the, with this conclusion, we are uh, the uh, these GNRs can be further used as a biosensing of pesticides, insecticides of uh, detection of these pesticides. 
uh, i further acknowledge uh, the ministry of human resource and development mhrd council of scientific uh, uh, and industrial research csir and the time facility of cil cef punjab university for the time characterization of sample i also acknowledge the icn organizer to give me the opportunity to present my uh, work in this uh, international conference thank you this is my research work thank you so much hello hello now the session is open for questions do anyone have any questions Hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, what is the difference between acetylcholine esterase uh, and uh, cholene esterase? Sir, so, uh, basically, acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme which converts acetylcholine to choline. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry. You are asking about acetylcholine esterase and choline esterase. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, both of these are the uh, esterase which can catalyze the ester as a substrate. Uh, so, uh, both of these can use uh, for the conversion or hydrolysis of acetylcholine. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> hello? Yes, sir. Uh, what is its inhibitors? Um, uh, sir, uh, if we if you are talking about uh, their inhibitors, uh, yes. what we are trying to explore there are the uh, organophosphates, which are uh, the major contributors as a inhibitors for these pesticides uh, for these enzymes. Okay. So uh, we are trying to explore some uh, diagnostics uh, prototype for the detection of this pesticide on the basis of the uh, gold nanoparticles as a enzyme substitute. Okay, thank you. Yeah. If there are no more questions, I welcome uh, Arul and Elden to present his work. Arul, uh, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I am here. Am I audible? Yes, we are audible. Uh, there is no problem with KD. Hello, is this visible, ma'am? Hmm? Yes, is sir. Is my sir. presentation visible? Okay, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Arulani Yeldon, Russell Scholar in Physics, Central Minister of Tamil Nadu, Thiruvaru. My research supervisor is, name is Dr. M. Kunmurgan, Assistant Professor in Physics, Central Minister of Tamil Nadu, Thiruvaru. I'm very glad to share my part of research work in this conference the title is icing modeled single walled nanotube with alternative interactions using wang landau algorithm first we discuss about uh, icing model then we go for a single walled nanotube this model was introduced by lens in 1920 and later developed by his research students Ernest Ising 1924 it's a mathematical model by taking assumption of uh, spins are located in uh, lattice sites it has it will take uh, values plus one and ops minus one uh, this is a, a Hamiltonian of uh, icing model minus J sum over SISJ minus B sum of SI um, if our j is a uh, interaction strength if j is greater than zero it, it will, the system will be in paramagnetic order 
where all the spins are aligned in parallel. If J is less than zero, uh, our system is in anti-parallel alignment, which will be give uh, anti anti-ferromagnetic order. B is the external magnetic field. Figure one illustrate the two-dimensional icing spin system. Now, the icing nano, nano sized icing magnetic objects like particles and uh, magnetic rings and magnetic wires, magnetic tubes, as uh, numerous wide range of applications such as magnetic uh, drug delivery and uh, nano medicines and uh, nano magnetic imaginary imaging long lasting magnetic devices that motivates us to model and investigate the properties of magnetic systems with the Monte Carlo simulations. In this work, we have taken a hexagonal tube-like structure. This is the representation of a single wall the icing nanotube. Uh, we have taken a spin-off icing model to tailoring uh, like a system with a layered graphene-like systems. Uh, here, uh, green balls are represent the magnetic spins, and red lines are the interaction between in, interaction within the layer. Uh, blue lines represents interaction among the layers. Uh, we are applying the boundary conditions to maximize the interactions. Uh, here, x and y, we are applying closed boundary conditions. In y, z direction, we are applying uh, open boundary conditions. The Hamiltonian of the system is defined as minus j sum over si sj minus j2 sum over s si and sk minus b sum over si. Here, j1, like we said earlier, j1 is inter interlayer exchange interaction, j2 is the interlayer exchange interaction, b is the external magnetic field. Here we focus on alternative interactions of the system and we study the magnetic properties of uh, of the system with the control parameters like uh, interaction strength and the external magnetic field and temperature and all. Uh, further, we need, we are taking a magnet A type magnetic ordering and C type magnetic ordering, which will obey the intra uh, alternative interactions. In A A type magnetic ordering we are getting a parallel alignment in interlayer inter, intralayer interactions and anti parallel alignment in, in interlayer interactions uh, in c type we will get a anti parallel alignment in inter intralayer interactions within the layer and uh, uh, parallel interactions will get uh, fm layer, fm interaction will get in uh, our between the layers so here we have got, got the same replications of spin ordering each every layers now we move on the bangalore algorithm here we this model was in, proposed by uh, professor wang and lando in 2000s it is in a non boltzmann method uh, because it's independent of our temperature later we apply the temperature we will get the average observables this technique aims to perform a, uh, a random walk in energy space with an appropriate microcanonical probability <coughs> 1 over uh, g of e here g of e is the density of state uh, now we consider a system having energy e with the equilibrium thermal reservoir uh, our probability will be 1 over partition function g of e exponential of minus beta e. Uh, once we know the g of e, then only we can calculate the uh, uh, thermal averages from the partition function equations and all. Uh, so we need to ca calculate the density of state first with the Langland algorithm. Uh, uh, for that, we need to initialize the uh, Langlandism of uh, Please yes, speed up the presentation. Okay, ma'am. First, we need to uh, initialize the logarithm of density of state and the histogram for all energies. Uh, we are generating the initial and trial configurations 
the trial configuration is accepted by the probability in step four and the trial configurations of uh, densities and uh, uh, histogram is updated accordingly and after the all these steps we can go, get the converged density offset from the converged density offset we will apply the um, unweighting and reweighting technique and we can get the observables uh, oh, with the uh, mr arun you are not audible yes ma'am now it's okay clear hello hello madam is the audible madam hello hello continue with the presentation hello yes it is audible uh, please continue uh, okay uh, after calculating the density of state we are uh, uh, taking two uh, type of simulations once uh, we are uh, giving the system uh, absence of magnetic field and presence of magnetic field. in the absence of magnetic field the a from uh, a a type a from uh, systems uh, the interactions of j1 will be changed from 0 0.2 to 1 and uh, j2 is remaining con constant min as minus 1 in c type the interaction is uh, uh, start from minus 1 to uh, minus 2 minus 0 0.2 and the j2 interaction is will be 1 these are the magnetic uh, observables of uh, uh, absence of magnetic field with the interaction j1 interactions here uh, in four uh, magnetization and the susceptibility flat will be is depicted here the transition temperature is increases as J1 increases for uh, air group interactions and the transition temperature decreases for J1 interactions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two, three slides only there. I'll conclude, sir. Um, so, phase diagram. As temperature increases, the A from will be become paramagnetic and C type will become a par paradigmatic as temperature increases. In the presence of magnetic field, uh, our uh, system will be changed to 0 0.5 to 3 uh, with, uh, in a um, magnetic field. In at a lower temperature, the vast magnetic field is increases. Uh, the, uh, the system is transits to A from 2 uh, para and B, C A from 2 para. As magnetic field increases, after uh, uh, magnetic field uh, greater than 2.5, it is it will become a ferromagnetic to para. In both conditions, it will mm -hmm. be satisfied. Mm -hmm. So the yes, diagrams and in the entropy diagram we will get the uh, we'll confirm the second order phase transition the, if the, there is no discontinuity in these plots so we confirm the second order transition so in, his, in this conclusion section we are taking the notes is the AFM interactions AFM and CA from uh, phases are converted to paramagnetic phase uh, in the absence of magnetic field in the presence of magnetic field the ca form and a form uh, phases are changes to paramagnetic phase below the uh, 2.0 magnetic field fm and uh, phase is transits to paramagnetic phase above the 2.0 interactions uh, is this small magnetic or uh, antiferromagnetic interaction is enough to make a uh, whole system in antiferromagnetic phase even though if uh, fm magnetic is presence our whole system will be uh, follow the and the second order transition these are the references and thank you hello uh, thank you arul for your presentation now i call uh, mr sandeep kumar to start the presentation good evening ma'am good evening I just give me some minute. Some screen is visible. Sun. Yes, it is. Yes, it is coming. <coughs> okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
good evening to all conference members today i just uh, present the we are applying abstract on the topic interaction studies between the protein and a carbon nanotube using a molecular docking software and i will do all in the guidance of mrs dr sunita nagi ma'am under which i have phd and i have the just work over the whole of this interaction and today i just present my abstract at some about the references protein actually is made up of amino acid and that protein ha has basically a primary you can say there are three kind of protein structures that on linear that is a 1d and plane that like a secondary and tertiary in the space structures in the case of linear structure amino acid that are considered as a beads of a necklace like that on and they have joined together to form a peptide bonds to form protein structure and these linear chain undergo if we are going to uh, make it a twist and turn to form the next structure of amino acid that become the secondary structure of proteins and that they are generally called as the alpha helix that depend on the shape and beta helix when the x y z axis that all are come in contact naturally that it form the space and they have the 3d structure of protein that was formed uh, nanoparticles which are very small and in the order of 9 10 h power minus 9 have unique properties that may be useful in diverse or different range of application basically that application we are going to use in biomedical science and biotechnology and that will uh, after study we it will attract significant interest particularly in the field of biomedical field and that uh, use of nano vaccines uh, nowadays they are very familiar because of nano technology improvise and it will help uh, to, in today so much uh, medicines as well as injuries as well as neuron systems that all will work under this uh, development of biomedical science with the nano vaccine and nano drugs that basically intensively research and nowadays as we know all the corona that also be under the research these all are only helped with the help of this interaction and that interaction of nanoparticle with the protein is the basically of nanoparticle that have a bioreactivity and when they react they will show the some bioreactivity and this interaction give to rise the formation of a dynamic nanoparticle protein like corona it will form like shape of corona the main aim of that work is to study the interaction of protein with the nanoparticle using the software that is the vmd visual molecular dynamics and the another software that is the molecular software docking software uh, it also be used for the studying this interaction uh, for a short or small molecule basically visual molecular dynamics is a molecule modeling and it is shows the excuse me sandeep yes, please speed up the presentation okay ma'am visualize computer as a program and that is uh, docking software is basically used to predict uh, small molecules such as uh, drug candidates uh, that uh, help in a receptive uh, uh, or uh, study the molecule interaction bind to receptor of non 3d structure the interaction between the protein and nano material is important for the point of application of nano material delivery and this work the basic interaction of a myoglobin protein is studied using autograph software in autogram to find out the interaction that basically used to find out the interaction between the carbon nanotube and myoglobin protein and that is corona like structure is formed which looks quite similar to the structure reported by the workers that is uh, under work and that these are the some references that help me thank you to all yes ma'am thank you sandeep for your presentation now i call thank you ma'am can i stop yes, yes. Okay, i you. call jyoti s yes, uh, doddamani oh, yes ma'am department yes. of studies and physics 
Karnataka University. Yes, so good evening. Proceed. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My slide is visible, ma'am? No. No? No, it is not visible. No? Now is it visible? Yes, Jyoti, please proceed. Yeah. Yes, is it visible for visible? Myself, Jyoti S. Turmani. I'm doing uh, research under uh, uh, MKRP. Please now. present the entire screen. Yeah. I'll wait for my file now. Now is it visible entire screen now? Yeah. Is it visible entire screen? Yes, it is visible. Please proceed. Yeah. Myself, Jyoti S. Turmani. I'm a research scholar in the Department of Physics, Karnataka University, under the guidance of uh, Professor M. K. Rebina. Uh, today, my work is uh, what I'm presenting here is modification of bare nickel plate for water splitting. Now, outline of my work is the introduction and basically hydrogen evolution by electrochemical water splitting, modification of Ni plate for the water electrolysis and research and discussions. Now, the question comes, why only hydrogen? It is observed that we are the, for the energy needs of the world, we are de uh, depending on the non-renewable sources like coal, oil, natural gases and so on, and which are depleting. So the alternative for this is the uh, renewable energy sources, which are solar, wind or a geothermal, hydrothermal, whatever the thing is. But the problem with these is the solar energy or the wind energy or whatever the thing is there, that is available only when they are there. So, for example, in the night, I'm not able to utilize the solar energy since the sunlight is not there. So I need to have some alternative wherein I can utilize this, this non-renewable energy and I can store it and I can use it whenever I want it. So in that regard, this hydrogen uh, can play a very vital role to meet the energy demands of the world. What, what can be done is the electricity from the renewable sources can be utilized to have the electrolysis process of the water. From that, the hydrogen is evolved and that can be stored and can be utilized as and when it is needed. Now, in this regard, the much more uh, research is going on the uh, cost effectiveness of the electrolyzer and also the storage of the hydrogen. So now, Basically, what we are concentrating is on the electrolysis of the water. So this, in this electrolysis of the water, the anode and cathode plays a vital role. Now, the this is this process, the electrolysis of the water was known long before, not now. But the thing is, this has to be made cost effective, not only cost effective with the environmental friendly and earth abundantly available materials can be used so that it can be utilized very well. So in that manner, there is an anode and cathode. Uh, this is connected to the battery. Now the battery voltage, what the earlier they are using is much more. So now we want to have the battery voltage, which can be utilized with the uh, alternative source like uh, solar or the wind, whatever the thing is. And the minimum battery voltage has to be required in order to carry out the uh, uh, electrolysis of the water. At the cathode, the hydrogen would be uh, evolved. So we can see the reaction at the uh, anode. At the anode, the water 
water comes and that water will spit up into the oxygen and the H plus ions with the release of the four electrons. Now for this process, the energy required is 1.23 volt. And at the cathode, the H plus ions which are released and also the H plus ions which are present in the uh, electrolyte can come into the cathode and they interact with the electron and then they can have the evolution of the hydrogen. Now for that, the energy requirement is nil there. So the overall the voltage which is required thermodynamically is around 1.23 volt. But actually this process is not happening at 1.23 volt. We need some extra energy or extra voltage to carry out this entire process. Why? Because of the anode and the cathode uh, barrier potential involved and also the potential or the internal resistance which is uh, uh, due to the charge transfer of the electrons or the charges from one side to the other in present in the electrolyte there. So the, there would be the extra potential which is required more than 1.23 volt and which is called as the over potential. Which, now the, the main issue of the entire process is the minimization of the over potential and we are working in this regard. So to minimize the over potential we need to have an electrode okay such that whose uh, the barrier potential should be less here the anode and the cathode potential should be less there and the choice of the proper electrolyte now the entire cell voltage can be reduced if we are designed in such a manner that the anode and cathode are having a lower potential and not only that instead of having a two different anode and cathode electrodes if you are having a same material as which can uh, effectively have the hydrogen evolution as well as the oxygen evolution then the cost of the cell or the economy of the cell or you can say the cost can be reduced there so we are looking into the bifunctional uh, electrolytes so in this manner in this manner we can have that electrolyte so in this case we have drawn with the many other uh, uh, electrodes and uh, the, the base substrate we have tried with the uh, iron we have uh, steel we have tried with the copper and nickel and we came to the conclusion that the nickel work well and the nickel not only that it has to be modified to have in order to have the more effective uh, uh, less so uh, potential of the uh, hydrogen evolution as well as the oxygen evolution so in that case what we did we have considered the short chain thiols basically the thioglycolic acid and the two mercaprotonic acid and the mercaprotonol what we did is we have considered the bare nickel plate and this bare nickel plate is uh, dipped in the diluted thiols and that solution is eradicated with the uv light for the uh, two hours and after eradication this is taken out and washed properly and uh, dried so you can see the bare and the coated tga there is uh, there is a slight difference in this but not drastic difference in the uh, a plate there so the plate can be modified so this can be confirmed with the help of the sem images you can see here the sem of image of the bear is uh, not, nothing having any structures but the modified with the thiol like a uh, mercaptoprotonic acid and with the mercaptoprotonol and with the thioglycolic acid there is a structures which can be seen on the nickel plate there of course not drastic but a little bit modified uh, compared to the bare plate there now these plates are used as an anode and as well as the cathode but i want to characterize for the anode uh, how the over potential works and how the uh, cathode it works for the over potential so for that what we did is we have considered the three electrode cell measurement in that the working electrode is our modified nickel plate and the counter electrode is the platinum wire and the uh, reference electrode was ag agcl and the potential is converted with respect to the uh, reversible hydrogen electrode there now what we uh, you can see the lsv parameters means lsv curves of these three plates is compared with the bare plate we can see here the bare plate is showing the much more higher over potential for the 10 milliampere uh, uh, current density here but as we have modified with the other uh, ethanol uh, sorry other thiol uh, modified uh, uh, plates we can see that the over potential is goes on decreasing it means that they are much more efficient than the uh, bare plate not only for the hydrogen evolution reaction but also for the hydro sorry not only for the oxygen evolution reaction but also for the hydrogen evolution reaction in case of the oxygen evolution reaction the potential for the bare uh, nickel plate is uh, 1.69 means the over potential is around uh, 460 and the potential uh, for the um, 
thioglycolic acid modified thiol is uh, is very minimum which is around 1.58 it means that the over potential is uh, 340 millivolt there now in this case we have not used any uh, uh, any like complex method or complex uh, uh, reaction uh, uh, things there only it is modified with a uh, basically available uh, thiols there and we can see a drastic modification or uh, drastic reduction in the over potential of the oxygen evolution reaction the reduction of the oxygen over potential of the oxygen rea evolution reaction is much more important why because if i were at all i want to see the overall water, uh, water spitting reaction oxygen evolution reaction involves four electron uh, process wherein hydrogen evolution uh, evolution reaction involves two electron process so oxygen evolution reaction is much more rigorous and much more sluggish so if we are able to uh, reduce the overall uh, over potential of the electrolytic cell if we are able to um, able to reduce the oxygen evolution reaction over potential then definitely that will help to reduce the hydrogen also now if we look into the hydrogen evolution reaction then we can see that all the thiol modified nickel plate have shown the same over potential means the same uh, potential at which your uh, 10 milliampere of the um, current density of the current is uh, observed but again they are less compared to the bare nickel plate so we can say that the modification of the nickel plate with the help of the thiols will reduce the over potential for the oxygen evolution reaction as well as the hydrogen evolution reaction so in this man uh, in this case uh, in this manner we can reduce the overall over potential of the cell means that the, the overall process can be uh, taken for a lower uh, voltage there and why we have gone with this strategy because we have tried with the other material and we have got the good result and the coating has uh, increased the stability of the electrode therefore we want to try with this also this work means in this uh, case what we have did is we have coated the dopamine with the same procedure and then the oxygen evolution process as well as the hydrogen evolution process was very good and the stability of the electrode is also very good and this work is uh, uh, presented in the uh, this research article and hence uh, we can conclude that the um, thiol modification of the uh, electrode can definitely help to uh, minimize the over potential of the uh, overall uh, water splitting process so the conclusion is we can uh, minimize the uh, over potential and the TG in uh, the out of those three TG means uh, thiols which I have used thioglycolic acid has helped more to reduce the over potential for the uh, oxygen evolution reaction. So this is what my presentation is. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, am I audible there? Yes, thank you, Ms. Jyoti S. Dodamani, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any other questions? Or any other suggestions? Suggestions are also equally welcomed rather than the questions. Jody? Yes, sir. Hi, it was nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Um, I need a suggestion from you. I need yeah. to, uh, I need to um, uh, use a dissolved mixture. Sorry, sorry. Use you need to? I need to measure yeah. hydrogen in water produced uh, uh, water splitting. So, uh -huh. would you suggest a method for that? Hydrogen means you want to measure the amount dissolved, of the hydrogen which is produced? Dissolved hydrogen. Yeah. Dissolved, dissolved H2. Uh, I'm not getting. Uh, you want to produce, uh, measure uh, the hydrogen which is produced from the electrolytic cell? In, no, no, no. Water splitting. From water, the water. Uh, now, uh, water produced water splitting. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, I need I got, to dissolve the hydrogen. Now I what happens when I say the water splitting process, there are yeah. several methods which are available. One of the method is the electrolytic method, what I have presented now. But there are other methods like photocatalytic one. Now in case of our method, what happens? Two electrodes are there. Therefore, at one electrode, hydrogen is produced and at the other electrode, oxygen is produced. So the mixing of the gas is not there. So this is one of the novelty of this work. Now what happens is from this uh, other electrode, from that other electrode, you can collect the gas from the uh, container what uh, usually um, uh, would be done like the two electrodes which are put in the two different uh, tubes and then the common electrolyte and then the process and that gas can be collected and measured. Otherwise, means some uh, some people will do like uh, online measurement, like this entire setup is connected to the gas chromatography. Now, what happens? The gas chromatography will collect the hydrogen and then it will tell what is the amount of the hydrogen which is there. In case of the photocatalytic uh, process, what happens? The Both the oxygen and hydrogen gas would be evolved. So at that time, you can collect the entire gas which is uh, produced there. And then again, you can give it to the same to the uh, gas chromatography. So at that time, it will tell what is the percentage of hydrogen is present and what is the percentage of oxygen is present. So likewise, you can measure the hydrogen production. Come on, don't be normal. Hope I clear your doubt. Hello. Uh, yes, can sir. you comment on a brief note on your knowledge? Sorry, your, your, your voice is too low. Can you comment on your uh, novelty of your work? Novelty, yeah. yeah. Novelty, as I told, because in the beginning of my slide, when I talk about my uh, slide there, in the beginning of my slide, I told like it is the means uh, uh, it uh, uh, we can have means we are depending on the solar energy for the much more uh, aspect. Okay, but in case of the solar energy, what happens when there is uh, no sunlight or when there is a dim light, then the production of that light is uh, minimum, means the energy is minimum. And the main drawback is we can't store here. Okay, but uh, if I, if we utilizing those non -renew renewable sources and then production of that uh, energy from that the electricity and that electricity can be utilized to have the production of the hydrogen. And now this hydrogen can be stored. Now it means that indirectly you are storing the uh, renewable source energy and you are ut utilizing as and when you required it. But if say means it means that in the night means in the daytime you can utilize the sun and have the solar energy and you have the electricity and at the night time you can go with the hydrogen and then do what all you want. So this is what the main novelty of my uh, work is. Hello sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your active presentation in International uh -huh. Conference of Nanotechnology. Now I request everyone to please join Hall 1 for the closing ceremony. Madam, you... uh, we also as a participant thank the organizers and all the committee members for giving us a opportunity to present our work here. Thank you ma'am. The link for the closing ceremony is present in the chat box. Chat box